Good morning and welcome to this Sunday, Transfiguration Sunday. Um, we have certainly this video and it looks like we're going to have a service outside at 930 if the weather holds out. It looks like it's going to be that way. So if you want to be around for the 930 communion service, um, it will be just outside and be radio broadcast to you in the car. After that service, we are planning to have their annual or semi-annual meeting. Um, that also will be broadcasted uh, across into your radio to your car. And um, we have a couple things, um, some, a couple of lections and a couple of information to pass on to you. So um, if you're there, fine. If you're, I, we hope you would be there. Um, if not, I hope that you enjoy um, and are edified by watching this video. This week um, marks the beginning of Lent with Ash Wednesday on Wednesday. We thought on ways that we could do the distribution of ashes in a way that would be holy or that, that it would work. Um, and we couldn't think of any way, but we do, what we are planning to do or what we're asking you to do is to uh, get up in the morning and put a sign of cross on your hand and wear that all day as a reminder. Um, and when you do make the mark on, the, on your hand that you say, I remember that I am dust and unto dust I shall return and I live in the Lord and I die in the Lord and I, therefore I am the Lord's. Um, the instructions for that will come out on your door tomorrow or on or it's out on friday um so there will be a whole thing you can the instructions you can post on your refrigerator door so that you remember on wednesday to do that wednesday morning that would be fun i think for the kids to do um and the experience and just to be constantly reminded all through the day that it's ash wednesday and that we are the lords uh, on wednesday at seven o'clock we will have a uh uh, we will release our um, uh, worship service that will be on YouTube, um, and we'll give you the link. We'll send out a link for that via constant contact. Um, and that will begin a process that every Wednesday night we will start a program um, and uh, release a video um, uh, at 7 o'clock at night. Um, the program we're doing is called uh, Amidst Our Neighbors, and it's a study or Bible study into how we feel, uh, certainly in, as we've evolved in our understanding of people of other different uh, cultures and races. And, um, you know, I, I don't want to say all the buzzwords of what this is about, but we learned that uh, diversity and certainly how we handle and talk to, uh, in the public arena especially, um, and how we make policy and how it affects, that it affects people differently and it, expect, it affects different groups differently. And uh, so we're gonna talk about that. Um, and, and certainly it's not to really talk about other people and it's not really to talk about, you know, how we're gonna change the world. It's really to talk about what our attitudes are, um, what forms and shapes us in our thinking and maybe to provide a way that we all can learn together. And I think um, my experience with this has been that it's been a very joyful, um, very moving and enlightening experience. And I think that this is a time that we need um, to be able to accept and work through that challenge. So I know most of you will be shy about talking. I mean, don't particularly, uh, you know, right out of the wagon here, it doesn't sound like it's the most enjoyable thing to talk about. But um, I think it will be enlightening. And I think that uh, our conversation and the questions and the Bible studies will be thought provoking. So I invite you to participate in Amidst Your Neighbors. And if you don't want to attend the Bible studies on Wednesday night, you can certainly be, go back and take a look at the videos um, on YouTube anytime that you want. We have some uh, continue with our prayer concerns. Um, we pray for Stephanie Bollinger and baby Michael Reed Michael. We pray for Linda Davis and her family at, the pa at her passing, and Carl Gerber and Robert Luby and his family at his passing, Adam Norris and his family at his passing, and Mary Lou Saunder at her family and her passing, um, Cameron Schultz, Rita Sims, and Kathy White, that they continue their healing process. With that, let us continue with the order of confession and forgiveness. 
Blessed be God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose forgiveness is sure and whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Together, let us honestly and humbly confess that we have not lived as God has desired. Loving and forgiving God, we confess that we are held captive to sin. In spite of our best efforts, we have gone astray. We have not welcomed the stranger. We have not loved our neighbor. We have not been Christ to one another. Restore us, O God. Wake us up and turn us from our sin. Renew us each day in the light of Christ. Amen. People of God, hear the glad news. By God's endless grace, your sins are forgiven and you are free. Free from all that holds you back and free to live in the peaceable realm of God. May you be strengthened in God's love, comforted in God, Christ's presence, and accompanied with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. pray. Almighty God, the, the resplendent light of your truth shines from the mountaintops into our hearts. Transfigure us by your beloved Son and illumine the world with your image through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. This morning, our reading is from Second Kings. Now, when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, yes, I know. Keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, Yes, I know. Be silent. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them, as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. The water was parted to the one side and to the other until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, You have asked a hard thing. Yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. When, when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them into two pieces. The word of the Lord. Psalm 50, verses 1 through 6. 
the mighty one, God the Lord, has spoken, calling the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, perfect in its beauty, God shines forth in glory. Our God will come and will not keep silence with a consuming flame before and round about a raging storm. God calls the heavens and the earth from above to witness the judgment of the people. Gather before me my loyal followers, those who have made a covenant with me and sealed it with sacrifice. The heavens declare the rightness of God's cause, for it is God who is judge. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John and led them to a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to him, to them, Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. And Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. And he did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice, This is my son, the beloved, in whom I am well pleased. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. And when, as they came down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of God had been risen from the dead. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hi, boys and girls. Um, today, uh, for a children's sermon, I brought in something that's kind of special to me um, to show you. you. Want to see it? It is a boat. It's kind of not a boat you play with. It has some oars on it. It's a special kind of boat, actually. Um, this is called a lifeboat. When a long, long time ago, not so much today, but I, I guess it is true today, that there would be these boats on a ship that you would take across the Atlantic Ocean, across the big seas, and you would take, you'd ride on a boat, and these lifeboats would be up, you know, tied to the top of the ship, and that if something were to happen to the ship, they would drop these lifeboats down, and people would get on them so that they would be safe. Well, they, um, the boating company um, made this huge big boat called the Titanic. Way a long time ago, over a hundred years ago, the ti Titanic, let's see if you could even see the, see there's being, you might, say, you might see it says Titanic on there. This is a model of one of their lifeboats. The Titanic was a boat that sank in the Atlantic um, and it had lots of people on them and they had to, push out the light bulbs so that the people could be saved. Well, why this is so important to me or why this story would ever come up in a children's sermon is that a relative of mine from many, 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 many years ago, like 109 years ago, was on one of these lifeboats on the Titanic. She, her name was Bridget Driscoll and she came from um, visiting her mother who was sick and who later died. And her mother is my great, 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 great grandmother's sister. Um, and um, she came home to America, was coming back from that, and she came on the Titanic and she was on the last lifeboat that was um, issued on the Titanic and she was one of the survivors of that terrible tragedy. And I tell you all that because I think boats are cool and I, the story is pretty cool, but I tell you all that because that says something when you know the past and you know some things about people in your past, certainly family, you know something about who you are. 
There's something about this that I identify with. It's something that about my knowing that my family or somebody that was a part of my family, even though they were 100 years ago, that this was a part of their history, draws me to this event, makes me experience this event, and makes me enjoy or kind of see this as an important event for me to pay attention to. And I think that's good, because we all have events that we to draw us in and pay, makes us pay attention and think about who we are in the middle of those events. And I think that's important. I don't know if that's making sense. But um, Jesus today shows us he's God. He transforms, he becomes white, as bright as the sun, and transforms in front of us. And that's a really important event because we all, it's not just about Jesus, but it's about us and how we respond to Jesus and what we believe about Jesus. And we are drawn into that event, just like I'm drawn into this event with the, the Titanic lifeboat, because it becomes important to us and it becomes something that becomes part of our history and part of who we are. When we believe in Jesus Christ, when we see the goodness of God in the people that are around us and say, ah, oh, that is God's influence, that's Christ's influence. When we see that, that makes all of us stronger. That makes our faith stronger and it makes our life in Christ stronger. And that's really important. So that's kind of what we're talking about today. Um, and um, so I hope that there are those kinds of events that are important. Maybe you can ask your mom and dad what, what events are important for your family and different events that you can talk about and see how they become a part of you um, and a very, very important part of you. And think about your faith as of also having those events as well. So let us pray. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you for all the experiences that we have that reveal to us your presence among us and help us to be able to think about them and to also learn from them and develop our faith because of them, our faith in you. This we ask in your name. Amen. God bless. Let us pray. Dear Lord, open our hearts that we may look at faith as not just reaching out into a dark abyss that we have no idea where we're going, or that we're pointed in a direction and we walk in that direction blindly. But help us to see our lives as a process, as a journey. And along that journey, the revelation of God comes to us in many ways. And that through each of those ways, we progressively get to the point that we have to wonder and we have to discern and we have to reason to the point that we understand that you are the Christ, you are God's son, and you lead us to this point of faith where we can continue to walk into the future with you. Help us to be able to have that and the peace and joy that comes with that and to be able to share that with those around us. This we ask in your name. Amen. For something like, oh, I don't know, three years, Jesus was an itinerant preacher. He moved up and down the towns of Galilee, sharing the gospel message. He even visited Jerusalem a couple of times, depending exactly on which gospel you read. And all that time, he had the apostles with them. He started, they started with a leap of faith to join his group. But as time went on, they probably grew more and more convinced that something good was going on right in front of them. This morning, I think of that journey the apostles were on. They heard about God in ways that were fresh and thought-provoking. They had to think. They had to wonder. They had to see for themselves. It was right there in front of them. And their, conver their conversion, and by conversion, I mean their friendship, their support and devotion to, Je to Jesus, didn't come all at once. It took time. It was a process. They got used to the human, quirky side of Jesus who needed his quiet time. They got used to his divine Jesus that talked about God and went out of his way to help people, especially people in need. 
They never got used to his surprises, though. In a routine situation along a dusty road, Jesus had the power and the will to show to them something new and breathtaking, like subduing a maniac with words and prayers. Or in a boat on a stormy night, Jesus revealed his command of the wind and rain. And what about those apostles? Whatever, wherever they were from, wherever their reason for signing up for Jesus, they were on a special journey. Each teaching, each miracle, each day was another adventure that was scary and at the same time life-defining. They learned who God was. With Jesus, they saw things. With Jesus, they heard things. With Jesus, they experienced things. And all that gave them something to ponder, to think about, to process. And in the end, something that they can trust and believe in. But they had to figure it all out. To say that the apostles had faith is overly simplistic. They had to wonder, or they had to grow to wonder. They had to do the work of discernment. They followed Jesus. And if they were like Thomas, and I think they all had, were like Thomas, he gazed at Jesus with a jaundiced eye. I hear them suspiciously saying, is this guy for real? And at some point, it became less about Jesus and more about what they were going to do about their relationship with Jesus. I mean, kind of like dating and falling in love. Well, are you going to propose or what? So it is because it becomes about the apostles, what the apostles believed, what the apostles interpreted, and what all that meant for those red-blooded Middle Eastern traditionalist Jews that they were. So along the way, Jesus asked them, hey, um, who do you say that I am? And Peter responds quickly, you are the Messiah. Like, almost it was a matter of fact. Like, of course, you know, like, you are the Messiah. Can someone pass me the bread, please? You know, the apostles had passed this test. Jesus is under their skin in a personal way, but also in a divine way. So the next adventure is for Peter, James, and John to join Jesus on a mountaintop vision with Jesus and Moses and Elijah. This shook Peter, James, and John in their boots. Once again, they needed the process and to think this through quick. They realized their faith had taken them this far, and now there's another hump, and over they go. They experience the divinity of Jesus Christ. You know, we hear this story every year, but today I wonder. I wonder if our faith is all about what we believe about our process. Because I'm not sure that the apostles' faith is just about their beliefs and their process. I always thought the apostles were lucky in faith because they had the tangible experience of Jesus with them. I always thought that their faith for them was a slam dunk. It's much harder for us who do not have a tangible Jesus right in front of us. It's harder for us to believe and to follow. St. Augustine said that faith comes from God and we can't believe a thing if God didn't start the process, process within us. I buy that. I think that God does initiate the opportunity to have faith in each one of us. But day by day, we need to interpret our experiences. We need to listen, to see, to feel, and to experience the world around us. Nature, we learn, is consistent and predictable. A medical scientist once said, if it's predictable, it's preventable. I believe that. Nature must be consistent and at some point predictable. But there are things that fall outside of nature. There are things that require greater scrutiny. There are things that are unexplainable. There's Jesus and the transfiguration, if you believe what is written. There's life. There's love. There's wonder. But of all that, there are these experiences that cause us to pause and to wonder. 
What if these experiences are just like stones along the apostles' journey, helping them piece by piece to wonder and to process what it, it is that they think and what it is that they believe? Maybe we have the same kind of journey they do. We just need to look and listen to what Jesus places along our path. And the accumulation of these experiences with our process develops what we know as faith. Maybe it's not so much of what we believe, like how much are we willing to take a blind leap of faith for, but maybe how much we have processed the experiences along our journey. Does that make sense to you? Think about that today. Maybe our faith is more about how we interpret the events of God in our lives than a willingness to reach out into the dark. I often say that a person doesn't believe in God it is, a, uh, is a person who has not seen the presence of God in us or the world. Because if you can see the handiwork of God, then and only then can you begin the process of wonder and le that leads to faith. This week we begin Lent, and just like a pastor, I challenge you to listen and to look and experience. I'm asking you to take a walk with me with a program called Amidst Our Neighbors. This walk will not change the world, not, that's not its purpose. Hopefully this walk allows us to process and may add to the experiences that influence our faith. Hopefully during this walk, we see Christ in each other. Today, the transfiguration on top of the mountain, Jesus shows his divinity to Peter, James, and John. But on top of that mountain of a whole bunch of experiences that got them there in the first place. Who knows? Maybe for us, the Matterhorn is in sight. I hope and I pray for that as I keep walking. Amen. <laughs> Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again and ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For the gospel proclaimed in word and deed, for communities of faith far and near, and for all who show the face of Christ throughout the world, let us pray. For our friends, partners, spouses, children, parents, uncles, aunts, grandparents, and all of those we love and who love us, may we celebrate the joy of being in a close relationship modeled by the unconditional love of Jesus. 
May we never take our loving relationships for granted and appreciate each day we spend with the ones we love. Let us pray. For those responsible for safety and protection, for emergency responders and security guards, attorneys and advocates, civil servants and leaders of governments, that they witness to mercy and justice throughout the world, let us pray. For all who suffer this day, especially Stephanie and Reed Michael Bollinger, Linda Davis and her family at her passing, Carl Gerber, Robert Luby and his family at his passing. Adam Norris and his family at his passing. Mary Louise Soder and her family at her passing. Cameron Schultz, Rita Sims, Kathy White. That Christ our healer transforms sickness into health, loneliness into companionship, bereavement into consolation, and suffering into peace, let us pray. For companions on life's journey in this worshiping community, for loved ones who cannot be with us this day, and for guidance during struggles we face, that God's glory is revealed around and among us, let us pray. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So I ask, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he cast his eyes upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.